I'm really excited to talk about this first match with you. It was Orlando Pride versus New Jersey and New York, Gotham FC. Gotham walking away with the win in this one, 3-2. We had a ton of goals, some really beautiful ones, some late game drama. It had it all. It felt like a playoff type of match. And Lisa, you got to call it all. Talk to me about it. Uh, it was exciting. I mean, okay, it, I'm not going to lie. The entire 90 minutes wasn't exciting. The end, very, very exciting. Um, we actually, uh, calling the game in between, like, the booth, we can, like, hear, or we can hear all the producers and the directors and the audio people in our ears when they, like, press a certain button. They were all screaming at the last minute or so of this match. Um, I called it alongside Michael Minnick. We were screaming in the booth, staring at each other, like, what the heck is happening this match so exciting um uh, three two so five goals in this one which was a great start to the weekend of nwsl um just to take our, our listeners through a little bit of the timeline of what happened in this match it started in the third minute which is insane uh Gaetan Tine, she actually got the start for gotham under scott parkinson she wasn't supposed to start ali long was out with her fifth red card so Tine got the start um, and then she ended up getting her first NWSL career goal, followed by her first NWSL career brace. Uh, she got her second goal um, off of a set piece later in this match. But um, the team goals by this weekend were great. And it started with Gotham. Carly Lloyd had a she didn't get on the score sheet this weekend, but her influence in the game was very, very evident. Every time she touched the ball, it was progression for Gotham, moving the ball forward. Uh, Margaret Purse is the third Gotham goal scorer in this match. Um, and then uh, really, I think the moral of the story is when you look at a team like Orlando Pride, never say never when they have players like Sydney LaRue, Marta, Alex Morgan, even Ashlyn Harris, who frankly, on the first goal, I don't really know what happened, why she didn't save it. I actually have a theory behind that. Um, but it, Never say never because Sydney LaRue comes back. She's one of those players that no matter what's happening in the game, she's going to work her ass off and yep. she's going to get her team back into this or at least fight until the very end to do that. And that's exactly what she does. Erica Timrak ends up scoring first for the pride in like the 84th minute, 85th minute or so. Um, this shot, frankly, nothing special. Kaylin Sheridan can't save it. This is where my theory comes in. Uh, the first goal... Ashlyn Harris like didn't dive and yes. didn't grab it from Tine. And then second half, Kaylin Sheridan is in that goal. And the shot from Erica Timrak is honestly nothing special. And Sheridan can't save it. It hits her gloves and then goes into the net. <laughs> I, my theory is that there is like, we were talking about this in, in the booth. Like there was a sign or a light or something that both goalkeepers lost track of the ball. It was very weird. Very, very weird what happened to both of those shots. Whatever. A goal is a goal. It happens. Yep. And then Marta scores a penalty kick. Um, Alex Morgan drawing that penalty. Then the final say, seconds stop time. I was going to ask. I was like, final second. That penalty, what did you think? Soft? Not soft? Right call? It was a little soft. Not the right call? Okay. It was a little soft, but it, it was a call. It was a foul. It was a foul. There's another PK that happened this weekend. Very soft. Was not a foul <laughs> at all. But we'll get to that. Uh, this one, yeah, I think I think there was a little bit of contact. And then Morgan fell. So I'm going to say that. There was contact on the play. Because the other PK this weekend, there was no contact. Um, but anyway, stoppage time. Final seconds of the game. Ashlyn Harris out of goal for Orlando Pride. It goes off the post. That Orlando hit like four posts in this match. It was freaking nuts. Uh, Maggie Doherty Howard ends up getting her fifth yellow. So she'll be out next time Orlando plays. This one was nuts, Sandra. This game was nuts. It really just sort of felt like that type of game that had that had everything. Like, yeah, we're talking. We're looking. <laughs> we're looking really closely at these games that we know are going to have that sort of playoff feeling that playoff environment because certain teams are trying to make that late season push but this one on top of ha already having that energy really did have it all it had like really beautiful goals wonderful team goal from gotham it had some maybe not so <laughs> like aesthetically pleasing goals i think it had a penalty like call NWSL people... after dark magic happening on some of these it, goals it, it, i'm not gonna was... 
the penalty call that people like people like to have discourse about it so like uh hey we welcome that energy as well so i'm just like wow i'm like this this game really did uh kind of have a little bit of, of everything but going into this game gotham or excuse me orlando pride this this team that just sort of feels like they're they were just barely hanging on right to this sort of playoff position that they had they've been they've been slipping a little bit they've been going on a little bit of a run that has not helped them in terms of the standings. Uh, and now after this weekend's meet, they're sort of on the outside looking in. And then for a team like Gotham that just sort of seemed like they were pr like getting primed to like really set this run, getting those draws, like this sort of refuse to lose type of mentality. And then finally getting, a little bit of a statement win, maybe we can call it. Um, I think this team has had some maybe some some better performances and and or not better, but some other performances that we can look at and feel that they're more complete ninety minute performances, right? But this one sort of felt like even when they were presented with this sort of these late game scenarios <laughs> that could have maybe ch changed some things because some we've seen it in this league when moments get chaotic in late game moments, anything can happen, but they, they themselves, uh, you know, ended up hanging on uh, a further win, but um, with Orlando hosting this game, Lisa, uh, they were a team that did not participate in the uh, the midweek matches that took place, where we really started to see the beginning of uh, what has been player demonstrations throughout the league, um, in direct response to um, all of the reporting that has uh, come out uh, around um, former NWSL players Sinead Farley, Manishim, uh, Kaya McCullough, players who have spoken out, got on record uh, in terms of abuse that they have suffered um, while... Uh, in NWSL, and we've been seeing these really powerful moments um, throughout the matches taking place. Um, and in this in this game, we all sort of assumed that the demonstrations would continue because not all of the clubs were given the opportunity during those midweek matches to participate in these player demonstrations. Uh, so in Orlando, the demonstrations continued in the sixth minute. Play paused. They're doing this in the sixth minute to pay homage to the six years of silence that it took for these stories to be heard. Um, and a very special thing happened where um, Alex Morgan, who was a part of some of the reporting that has been coming out and shining light on this on these stories, um, was with Orlando, for, you know, getting the start. And then also Manashim was was present uh, at this game as well to to actually participate um, during the player demonstrations made the game. Um, there was, it looked at, as for those of us who were viewing it on the stream, a bit of confusion that took place uh, with Manashim uh, participating in this. And it looked like on the stream for us that the there was a misidentification, uh, that the, it looks like the camera angles were incorrect when people were trying to identify Manashim. And I just wanted to see if you can enlighten us, sort of give us an insider's view of the broadcast and, and, and what that sort of looks like when that's happening on air. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not really going to sugarcoat this. It was a misidentification that it, it didn't look like it. It was um, it, how these things break down from an insider perspective, of course, is horrible. And, and no one involved in the broadcast or even watching the broadcast wants that to happen by any means. Um, we did find out before ahead of times that Shim was going to be at the match and she was going to participate in the circle alongside Alex, Alex Morgan. That's really all the news and the information we were given. Um, as if anyone doesn't know, we broadcast these games remotely, um, which is like the best kept secret, maybe in the NWSL, maybe not. So our production crew is not on site. Yeah. Um, we have camera and, crew and, that and is on site. Mean, and by we, you mean like Vista, World Link, and yes. the crew that's pretty together the games. Okay. Yes, the 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 producer, the director, the audio, the broadcasters, we are not on site. Um, and so when we're calling these games, we have a camera crew that is actually on site and remote. That is, 
we get them freelanced through whether it's the club or the location or things like that. So they are actually on site. We do have camera crew there. Um, so the sometimes the communication between truck, you would say, which is like the producers, the directors, the audio and camera crew isn't always there. Like getting substitutes. Sometimes we don't get them until very late and it's already in the game. So this was happening. Um, the camera crew was told to get someone in regular clothing and that these camera crew people don't know who they're getting. And sometimes our producers and directors can't talk to the camera crew and say, wrong person. They can change the camera and they can get a different angle. So yes, mistakes were made and things like that. But ultimately, Shim did not want to be recognized and she did not want to be on camera. Um, so uh, us even identifying that she was at the game was okay, but not getting her on camera specifically was what she ultimately wanted and Orlando Pride wanted. Um, that wasn't necessarily communicated to us until at a later time, but it doesn't matter. The, the mistake was made and it was Brittany Wilson shown on the camera. Um, but in those moments, we have no control over what's happening and what we're seeing. That's why even separate from this situation, but camera work has been different this year where maybe a goal is missed. We miss it too. I don't get to see that either as a broadcaster. Um, so just certain things happen that we really have no control over and mistakes are made. Um, and I know the league wants to have very professional broadcasts and I want to do my job as a broadcaster and be a professional. My producer wants to be a professional. My director wants to be a professional and things happen, especially when you're not on site that we don't always have the most control over. Of course, it needs to be better and those mistakes need to not be made, but a lot of times they are out of our control. Right. I, well, I appreciate you uh, giving a little bit of insight there. I, I know our listeners um, really appreciate that whenever we get anybody, whether it's you or any of our prior guests who have come on and been able to sort of, you know, give those perspectives uh, in the past. So I appreciate you for kind of enlightening even even myself in that I did. I did not know uh, some of those things. So, uh, of course, uh, this game. Uh, ended up sort of, I think, setting the tone, I think, for, for the rest of the weekend because